So <clears throat> I, uh, I started 50 something games that year when we had the best record in the NBA with Houston, where we made, we should have went to the finals and all this yep. stuff. Um, and through the first maybe three or four months, like I, there were articles written, like I was shooting stretches, like for a month I shot like 70% from three from Chris Paul assists, you know, and the game plan didn't change from the year before. And Chris was trying to adjust. He was trying to figure it out. He had a little bit of injuries. So, and I'll never forget this one game they did, they were playing in Portland and they kind of shifted to this small ball. Get on, I'll never forget it. I played maybe 10 minutes that game and I knew like something was going to change. So I, I started the first 50 something games of the season and <clears throat> get a call from coach uh, Dan Tony. You know, uh, we want to maybe start PJ Tucker. Oh, I was, by the way, I was sick one day and they started PJ and then they call me and say, we want to start PJ. And I'm like, no, this is my position. I whatever. I, it took me a long time to. Do you say that in, in a meeting? You say I, like, we I'm, were on conversation. We had a phone conversation through text and and a call. And I remember sitting with my family, like, should I just come off the bench? I mean, you know, I it was a new thing for me to not. I had yeah. always sort of been the underdog, overachieving, and now I was sort of the overpaid guy who is underachieving from what they wanted, even though. I was doing everything that right. they paid me for. And, and what they were asking. And we were the NBA. most successful team in the NBA for the, if I was starting or not, you know, right. uh, we were so good. But Wait, don't say that. We were, we were, I mean, no matter what, I mean, you we were a part of that record. You provide I was, space. I was a part of that. Then injury happened and I was just so, sort of tossed off to the side. And, um, anyway, I'm making this the longest story, but, I, I asked for a trade to go to Phoenix, uh, and it, it happened, and that was it, – it was even even more of a struggle for me to figure out how to fit in with that team, and there was just so much chaos and everything. But my son – I find out that I'm going to have a son during that stretch. And when he was born, it's crazy. So I get traded. My wife's seven months pregnant, go to Miami, and uh, – She's seven months pregnant, and I'm like, we don't have doctors, anything. We had everything set up in Phoenix, and it's crazy. So, like, almost as the buzzer went off of your last, your guys' last game, I remember, like, I talked to some of you guys in the hospital. Uh, Our last game. You were still your last part of game that with team. Miami Heat. You weren't there because you But were... I wasn't there, so that's why I said your last game. So, our, our last game of Thank the you. season, um, my son was born, like, on the dot when the buzzer almost went off for the last game. So, and just seeing him every bit of miss, you know, trying to figure out what was going on with me, what was going on with my career and stress. And it just felt so minuscule to like what this kid can provide. And, and anyway, he's just a joy and he's the best. And now we have a daughter, but kids, make all of your problems that you had before kids just seem like selfish. You know, like what, why does it even matter? You know? So anyway, uh, I, I'm a full-time dad now. You know? I love that. So, but Which is a beautiful great. job, by the it's way. It's great. It's great. And I'm in no rush to do anything else right now. So. You, you kind of alluded to this earlier, but it is, it, when you look at your career trajectory, it seems like, when there were hard times that came off the court, things on the court were going well for mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. and vice versa. When things on the court were going as well, you have something like the birth of a son. Does it almost feel like it was like it's, it balances it out a little bit. Mm -hmm. We're being, this is my dog it. major. You can't see him, but Hi, major. Um, <clears throat> it, it is incredible how my life has worked out in that way. And, you know, I'm, I come from a religious background and I, I, you know, so, so many hours of praying and, and trying to figure out what God's trying to do in my life. And, um, you know, thank God basketball was my healing place during that time when I was in new Orleans and earlier on in my career, I don't know. I honestly, with what I experienced, like, at this point now, the fact that I play, continue to play basketball, the fact that I am even around anymore, you know, up until this point is a blessing. And basketball really saved my life. 
And it saved my life and it also became the craziest mind boggling uh, uh, stress ball ever too, yeah. you know? So, cause the thing that's your safe haven suddenly becomes your, like your hell almost, which again, it's like, I'm you sorry. already know, nobody wants to hear a guy who's making a bunch of money, but, but it's something you know your whole life and you've done your whole life gets sort of stripped away from you and, and you're kind of looked at as like not good enough and yeah. all this stuff. It's, it really messes with your mental health. And that's, that is a huge reason why mental health is a huge factor in the NBA right now because it's just tough and social media and everything makes it so much more difficult. So, um, can you hear my whole family? I know. <laughs> Maybe it'd be a nice touch if we can, <laughs> but no, I think it's my look, wife and kids. I'm, look, yeah. as someone who's not an NBA player mm. making millions of dollars and have the pressure of, you know, you do pretty well we, from the podcast. We but. talked about it earlier. <laughs> well, yeah, check. the podcast. I mean, yeah, yeah. We did talk about, I, I was lying for all of you who might not have known. I wasn't a top 10 pick mm. as I mm. alluded to earlier, mm -hmm. but it is, it's that part of the whole experience Mm -hmm. is fascinating to me because everyone wants to be the NBA guy. Everyone wants to be the, but there is this, this fan pressure. And now that I'm closer to him mm -hmm. than ever, like I'm monitoring stuff going on online, you see how much of that exists. Yeah. Yeah. Did you just stay away from it? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I haven't, I realized how unhealthy Instagram was in my life a long time ago. Thank God. And I, I very rarely, I still have one just in case, an opportunity comes around where I want to have another business or get involved with something where I do have a following of pretty awesome people that, you know, not everyone is, is going to just be one of these, uh, jerks online. You know, there are some people that really care and, and want to know what's going on. So, I mean, I've, I've kept that around, but I, I rarely post and I avoided it so much, especially when I was in Houston, because Especially there in, in basketball cities like a Philly, like we're talking about, or, or the Lakers, man. Yeah. I mean, Houston's one of those sports cities where just the pressure is always on you, and that's all people want to talk about with you. And, you know, Miami probably has a bit of that too, but there, there's a great culture of fans in Miami. And, like, I know you, <laughs> you have to say that, but it is actually true. <laughs> you have to No, it is true. 100% it is very true. true. It is very true, and they Miami are has, we have great understanding fans. and have always been like yeah. amazingly supportive of the team. Like Sacramento, for me, growing up was we didn't have winning season for twenty years, and then you know that two thousand two, two thousand one Kings squad came around, and they're so fun. But um, anyway, it's you know you have to focus on what's important and what actually matters in the comments of just douchebags really should not have any influence fair. on your life. No, that's and, fair. Love that and take. Yeah, I mean, that's it's great. true. It, they're just douchebags. <laughs>